junkies are sentimental. She sat in static silence, waiting in white filth, with a drink in her hand. Bird cage left open, little doves lost to the blackened sky, with eyes that cry and tongues which speak lies. She smelled of home, like white lemons and honey, and the ribbons between Bible papers and oven cleaner, I thought. And you carry the redlands of sias temples and sadism and hedonist flowers which bloom in menacing gardens, she thought in reply. I sit, in ecstatic drunkenness, waiting in white filth, pouring winks and nods and gentle touches and consent in code into your drink. She sings, like the wren I lost, to the blackened sky and the open road and red flags and men who flag with soul-stained scarves. Comrades and lindy hoppers, bellhops and beatniks release ravens and doves and butterflies into the hungry Empyrean, biting pearls and spitting peach pits into the abyss and into the hands of stolen children who will powder your nose for a kiss on the forehead. The coterie and I and her and them go limp holding hands. Like polygamist otters, we laugh, sputter, and scream, riding the yellow tide down Jasper Avenue. She giggles holds her face like children hold toys. She laughs, and, and, and. She's sweating midnight oil and anxiety. The taxi stops. A little red bird bites at the glass with Hanuman teeth, and my face goes gray, and my teeth shine like obsidian in the western night. And I look at her, and I see the wren's eyes sitting in her hand, looking into mine, and I hear your voice, though her lips don't move. What is she saying? Nothing, she sings. A melody from a Spanish film. I sang to her once when she was too high. Above the ground, above life, below my own expectations. She drops them on the floor. Her, not the bird, rolling them like dice, she says, snake eyes. She doesn't know. She's too young. Well, not too. I aged faster than the rest of you, so two years feels like 20, 1920, 1917. In my coat from the 1970s, we step dripping from the yellow waters beneath the emerald canopy. Broken fingernails, ballistic bulimics, doll-like eyes and open arms. We sit on mushrooms, little by little, smoking a pipe and touching our eyes. A woman called Strega, a divine queen, hidden beneath a golden arch, placed her lotus hand on my back and gave to me an eye to watch for predators in another life. She, her, she is no predator. But a little girl in a white dress led down the hole by a rabbit in a purple trench coat and a white gold Rolex. She shakes. We smoke. She wanders away. Tin cans on strings clank along the shack carpet. I come to her side, and as she smiles, wings of diviner sage and willow leaves and lovingly loathed night terror stretch from her back. The death's head moth puts her arms around my shoulders and says... The devil's nightcap is too big for his head, but fits you sweetly and without rhyme or reason or heroin, you galley through these dense valleys of yellow dolls to seek out these little bugs and lonely poppies and darling silver trumpets on the broken road. And what for? She laughs, shakes her head, shaking the fairy dust from her wings, brushing powder from her nose. She flies up and above the yellow tides, and as she flies away, I look up to see the wren's feet and wings. Fly up and away, little wren, lost in the yellow sea, drowning in slow motion. When we were children, did you see the devil at the bottom of the bourbon barrel, or at the bottom of the well? Little wren, where are you now, broken and sore? Are you sure? What a bore. Talc and clown lungs, silent smiles, a bed, a back seat, or some creep's trunk, where do you sleep? Little wren, when did you carry your thoughts on your back? Your wings were made to burn, diviner sage and willow leaves smolder in my palms where your heart used to be. I hate men. That's how you end up dead, she said, dragging our feet through summer puddles. Skirts fly with the evening breeze, thick and sweet. Incense burns, smoke rises with the summer heat. I hate men racing through the city streets, 
Hummingbirds sip absinthe from silver bells in monks' hoods on Drano. I hate men. The Fraser sun sets on a city heavenly blue, almost losing shoes, fucks and bobby pins and lipstick lids lost on the beaten path. She smiles to me seriously, wearing lawsuits with go-go boots and invoking terror from the outside wall. And here I am, titles and tatters, lost to the beaten path, long blonde hair matted with daisies, gravel is on our knees, almost married in summer, promised happiness at the foot of a taxi cab. I hate men, we sang. I hate men. Prince of the Soapbox. Om Mityanandam Paramashivoham, sing the Prince of the Soapbox into the bubbling silver street. He sings hymns of self-deprecation, self-degradation, self-flagellation from his little soapbox in the empty white house at the top of the hill. He falls to his knees, raising his burnt fingers to the gray sky, the smoke rising from the factories, the exhaust spewing from the people's wagons. Tears flowing from the public handbag begin to slowly descend to meet his shaking charcoaled hands. Anguish rests at his fingertips in the form of black and white pamphlets. Out of this chaos came Ruth. She donned crutches and boots by boss and the plaid skirts of little girls lost to the twisted road to the heavenly kingdom, paved with wet bedsheets and crystal and K. And here I am, in titchels, in tatters, in leftist gas masks. She reaches through my Yiddish naivety and from behind the mask, eyes as blue as the Aryan sky, inherited smoker's lines. She reaches forward and from the black crowned center she pulls from me, invisible lipstick prints. And from her, spews profuse apologies for impulsivity and lewd jokes. Om Mityanandam Paramasukhadam Kevalam Nyana Murtam Duandwa Titam Gagana Sadrusham Tatvamasya Dilaksham Ruth and Naomi dance through the bubbling silver streets, singing praises to Nimrod beneath the sapphic sun. It is just us. It is I. It is her. It is you. It is us. It is oneness sings Naomi. It is you, it is me, it's us, it's the way you cling to me, sang Ruth in reply. The broken record you blast beneath the plague, disorderly anger and negativity. You see power in these broken pages and mistranslations and broken tongues chewed to pieces. Bitten and ripped apart, with iron nails for strength and laudanum for attachment. The cult recipe is universal and traditional. Prince of the soapbox, you, holding books in lieu of hands. Your cries gather no sympathy, only the prudent laughter of leather dykes and the tears of masked children. Ekam mityam vimamalachalam sarvadi sakshibhutam Bhavati tam triguna rahitam satkurum tam namami wailed the prince of the soapbox into the bubbling silver street. Empty bottles. A divine light rests in my hands, masked by the fingers of the wicked and electric, ochre or orange, translucent and fluorescent and familiar, soft and smooth, loose and loaded. I'm watching the moon rise above my head. Moonlight drips through the holes in my psyche and soul in Hrdea. The sun rises softly upon the world in my palm. I watch it in comfortable wonder. The ceilings shatter like candy glass. I hear the sand pick up with the wind, chanting and dancing and singing, and people like me, missing places, people, and things that never belong to me. It's raining mixed mania amongst wild, wild things. Everything all at once. I'm stitching us back together under the beating sun, and I'm about to break the looking glasses which have spent far too long up my motherfucking skirt. Grass grows tall by the diamond at night. Dharmic tunnels of speech and spite. Empty my head. Pour the dirty water from that starving vase. 
Those flowers were left to dry for years before you arranged them in that bottle of tears. Holistic hedonism, divine masochism, it's a whole thing. And by that, I mean a flowery excuse. Cutting little holes for the soul to shine through. Human cut-ups wail through the real to real. Red like Rajneeshi police officers. Orange like the missing mission. Burn away my attachments and desires and thoughts. Kill these evils which rise like smoke and coat my insides with resin and tar. Save me with hydrotherapy, lilies and petals, jasmine soap, four pounds of eucalyptus flavored bath salts in the velvet underground. Rising early on Sunday mornings, loitering in satin robes and dancing with sewing scissors. The ancestors cry from beneath my bed sheets, but are resting with great awareness and power. Guns cocked, feathers lay in anticipation waiting for you to catch the bite of the bullet. When you've got what we've got, you'll fight, and you'll fight for life. And eventually, you realize that the ER is a lotus of lies. Or you just grew up sick, so you know. I've killed myself more times than I can count, and they still don't believe me. You'll have to kill off whole pieces, whole faces, so they'll see you at all. I don't keep my faces in a jar by the door anymore. I'm lining them up like cans and shooting them off the balcony of my childhood apartment downtown. Kill your darling, spoke the boy, and kill them I did. Thoughts hang themselves above us. O oh, mobile of worry dolls, coming down, one by one. Lemming kamikazes burst with ink as they collide with the page. Nothing pleasant comes of this. Sound familiar? The laughter of locusts carries letters from Venice, Italy, soaked in sandalwood, etchings and achings smudged with charcoal and written on parchment. Addressed to an ecstatic and religious prairie dyke sails fictional and flamboyant oceans. Lies of an abundance of love and communist beauty lay among purple flowers in a casket-like parcel. Amongst them, catatonic snakes cry in fat and extravagant colors, false eyelashes and dyed beard hair and vibrant glowing tears. Letters soon lost to clowns and cocaine and forgotten rituals. I intended to send them all back to you the way in which the end sisters do, but there they went taken by gloved hands, lost in their couch with bed bugs and cigarette butts and cribbage boards two feet from the body of a friend. I used to fall asleep to the street noise of Venice, Italy. I used to wander the valleys in my mind. I used to smile into your eyes, shaking and sleep deprived, as you wandered by my side, slipping arsenic as apple seeds into my tea. Barefoot, bound in copper wire, in silk pajamas, you walk arms around me, smiling gently as you tell me. We'll fill your pockets up with stones. I'll pick you up all on my own to drop you down into the sea. Silent moments, just you and me. Little blue eyes lost to a way of being, a way of seeing. Drowning at the bottom of a sea red like the flag. Shimmering in the moonlight like gasoline. The bottom of the wine glass. The surface of the moon. I heard my eardrums explode from the sound of my own voice. Beneath that sea of red wine, charcoaled hands reaching toward empty skies, full of lies. There they go with their typewriter toes, riding my highs and lows like the tides. I don't drink anymore. I've tried to tell them. And maybe you shouldn't either. Only the wine of which Ramprasad sings, intoxicated with love for the Divine Mother. I offer myself in pieces at her altar far below the ground. Prayers to her, the Holy Mother of death and rebirth. I cry to her washing her lotus feet with my tears, watching them float like bubbles on the surface of the water. Om Asya Shri Kalika Kavachasya Bhairavarishihi Anushtup Chandaha Shri Kalika Devata the brim of the wine glass, through the cotton clouds and the firmament, violet or violent, behind the writing desk, the pen is the mace in hands which bleed green.